Rick Siegel from Riedel Incorporated. I'm manager of system consulting here in the U.S. And today I'd like to introduce you to the uh, latest piece of our uh, artist puzzle. So the latest piece to the artist ecosystem. So we have the artist 32 frame, the artist 64, the artist 128, and now we've just added the artist 1024. So the artist 1024, as you notice, is a 2RU and it's capable of 1,024 ports and only 2RU. Uh, what we were looking to do here is to address the needs of, uh, of more of an IP ecosystem. Um, so that's how we were able to squeeze 1,024 ports into only two RU. The way the system is based is we have 10 card slots here, and they all incorporate what we call the universal interface card. The universal interface card is the only type of card that goes into here. And depending upon where you place it or how you provision it within our software, that will tell what type of function it has. So there's 10 slots here. If we place it into slots three or eight, it automatically becomes a network interface card, which basically gives you the interface into all of our other frames over the 1K fiber infrastructure. If we place it into any of the other eight slots, it becomes a subscriber interface card. And what that does is it incorporates up to 128 ports into each of these cards, eight slots for a total of 1,024 ports. Now, there is no assignment of whether or not when you buy that card, whether it's an AES 67, SMPTE 21, or 31, or a MATI uh, card. Basically, what you do is it's, it's all based on a licensing infrastructure. So you license the frame for the total number of ports that you want to have within that frame. So let's say I want 256 ports in there. I can have two cards or eight cards. And then basically what I do through my director software is I will assign whether or not those cards, how many ports will be assigned to these cards, and whether it'll be AES 67 or they'll be MADI or in the future VoIP. Okay, so th there's a couple more uh, major features with this. What we can do is, let's say we we're doing 256 ports, I don't have to do 128 on this one and 128 on this one. If I want to, I can spread those out so that I have a little bit more flexibility and redundancy. So if I want, I can put 64 here, 64, 64, and just spread it out. If one of these cards should happen to go down, I can actually move all of those 64 ports onto another card so that I don't lose any of those, uh, those ports or those communications. Speaking of redundancy, there's three ways to do redundancy within here. The first way is, as I said before, by moving those ports over to an available card. But we can also do, when we're doing SMPTE 2110, 30, or 31, we can also do 2022-7. Uh, so if you notice, there's actually two Ethernet ports here. One can go to your uh, red system, and one can go to your blue network system. So that'll basically give you 100% redundancy on those streams as they're going to be duplicated between those two networks. The other way, the third way, is basically doing an N plus 1 redundancy. The N plus 1 redundancy is if I put another one of the universal interface cards in here and I don't assign any ports to it, so I leave it blank, if one of these uh, cards should happen to go down, we can actually move all of that over to the available card. And what we'll be able to do in the future is have that be done automatically. So if it senses that any of these cards go down, it can actually move all of those ports over to the provisioned port, to the uh, provisioned N plus one card. And what that'll do is give you seamless uh, redundancy across the board. You also have two NIC cards here for redundancy. There's also dual power supplies. When we talk about MADI or just synchronization of the MADI or synchronization with your PTP clock within the SMPTE 2110, we can actually do up to uh, 17 clock sources on here. So let's say if we're doing MADI here, we can have two different MADI cores because there's 128 channels. That would be two 64 channel cores. Each one of those can do sample rate conversions. And then we can also have, uh, so if we have all eight cards, that's 16 different SRCs. And then there's also a master sync card that's in the back that can actually be the 17th sync on there. We're also introducing our new e-ink display here. 
within the e-ink display, even if the, the frame is off, you can actually see how many cards are in the frame and how those ports are provisioned amongst um, those different cards. So one other thing that I'd like to add that we're uh, offering for the first time here is something called Artist Care. So every Artist 1024 frame comes with Artist Care for free for the two years. And what that gives you is a level of security. If, if something should go down, you have seven day uh, support for that. Um, so you can call even on the weekends and one of our service members will pick up the phone and be able to assist you. The other thing is that it also provides um, if you send something in for repair, we can actually send out replacement boards um, for you within 48 hours so the, the system is not down. Um, so again, that's artist care and that comes free with every system for two years and then you can renew after those two years. One other uh, product that we're displaying here at the show is our new uh, RSP1232HL panel. So this is the second in a series of smart panels that we have. And uh, the 1232 is uh, 1200 series with 32 hybrid lever keys. Um, and again, this is one of our smart panels. Um, so one of the great things about this is you can actually work in multiple modes. You can uh, work in a talk and listen mode, or you can work in a uh, talk mute mode. Um, this is actually a touch screen here. And what we did so that you don't accidentally uh, touch anything, you make it so that when you, when you put your finger on and you intentionally put your finger on one of these uh, channels, it'll come up with a sub menu giving you easy access to some of those hidden features that a lot of people don't remember that is actually within the panel. So if I wanted to go and, and do a copy from reply, I can actually move something from the reply key to any blank space just by pressing and holding that blank area. So the way this is all programmed according with the, uh, the Artist 1024 and the 1232 panel is through our same director software that everybody's been, uh, been using for years. And what the 1232 allows you to do is to program everything through a graphical interface. So you get a one-to-one -one correlation for exactly what you're doing on the panel. You see that exactly in your programming um, environment. One of the really good things about this is you can do remote control. So if I wanted to take control, if I'm the EIC or I'm the, uh, the comms uh, engineer for that studio, I can basically go into remote control, see exactly what's going on live with that panel, and actually take control to fix things without actually going over to that space. So again, this is um, Artist 1024, the RSP 1232HL, and the Director Software. Thank you.